Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks again for joining us. I saw we have Jessica tuning in from the MLB Network Studios. Uh, so hello, uh, Jessica. It's so great to have you here. It's so great to have all of you here. Uh, thanks for joining us this evening and uh, taking some time out to learn about StatHead. Uh, if you uh, aren't, haven't, haven't heard of StatHead or, or maybe heard of it but don't quite know what it is, it's the uh, most powerful set of sports research tools on the internet. Um, what we've done here at uh, Baseball Reference is taken all of the data that's in our database and built this series of advanced tools that allow you to go many, many levels deeper into our database than you can on just the normal baseball reference page. Um, so what I'm gonna to do tonight is show you how to uh, use that. Um, uh, what I'm gonna do is show you how to use that um, and see kind of some, some tips and tricks and stuff like that. Um, uh, but while I'm doing this presentation, if you have any questions uh, that you would like answered, um, feel free to drop them in the chat or in the Q&A. You can use either option. Uh, and Katie, who is our uh, customer success uh, uh, for StatHead, um, she's monitoring the chat. She'll pass along some, um, she'll, she'll either answer a question right there in the chat or pass along to me and uh, I can answer it here on the, uh, on the video. So we'll make sure to cover all your questions. Again, drop them in the chat or in the Q&A either way. Everything I show you in the presentation tonight is from the questions that you submitted in advance on the RSVP form. So I got a nice list of questions. Uh, with apologies, we got so many uh, because so many people RSVP tonight that there's, there's no way I can get to all of them, but I'm gonna try to knock out as many as I can. So. Without any further ado, I, I feel like we've waited long enough. Let's go ahead and dive into uh, tonight's program. So uh, we'll, we're starting right now here with the homepage of Baseball Reference, which uh, I'm going to assume if you're on the webinar, you're probably familiar with. Uh, I just want to call out this guy, Jim McCormick, really great old school baseball mustache. And then if you click on him and go to his page, it's an even older school picture in the headshot. He has as old school as that picture looked, he has an even older, older school looking one. Uh, he's uh, from the United Kingdom, played in the 1800s. Um, so uh, just while I was waiting for us to get started, also Leon Durham, very cool move taking a uh, headshot with your aviator shades on. I thought that was that was pretty awesome. So um, just wanted to call out them uh, uh, while I was looking at the front page, waiting, waiting for us to get started. But tonight, what we're going to do is go up to this bar and click on this button that says StatHead. And that will take us to the homepage for StatHead. Um, and uh, what we're gonna do once we're in here is uh, uh, go to baseball, obviously. Although if you're interested in other sports, we have these same tools exist for basketball, football, and hockey. So you could, uh, if, if you like what you see uh, and you're also uh, really into the, the NBA, I know the playoffs are going on there. Same with the NHL, they just started um, this week. You could do an all sports package, get access to all of the tools for all of the sports. But tonight is gonna to be about baseball. So let's go into baseball and here are all of the stat head tools. You can see um, that there are a lot of them. There's a, a lot of different tools. Some of them are very easy. Some of them are, are a little more complicated, uh, but all of them, once you get the hang of it, are incredibly easy to navigate and very user friendly. So. Uh, we're going to start with some of the questions that I received in advance, and I'll start with the one from DeAndre, who asked, uh, where can I find war stats? Uh, obviously, uh, at Baseball Reference, you know, we're big fans of war. Um, we calculate, uh, we have our own calculation of war. War is on every player page, and it's a, a very important stat to us. So if you want to see war, the place to go is here, the season uh, and career finders. Uh, I'll just call it the season finder for simplicity. Uh, this is where you can find stats from single seasons and sp multiple seasons. So that could be a decade. It could be an entire career, all of baseball history, just three years um, or a single season. Uh, you'll notice that with all of these tools, most of them anyway, there's a batting and a pitching version. version. So I'll start off here in the batting version because uh, another question I have that relates to this later will will be in there. Oh, uh, looks like the page. Uh, there we go. Um, so this is what 
the season finder looks like. It's also kind of generally what most stat head tools look like. And there's three important sections to, to pay attention to. So um, uh, the first thing, when you, when you think about it, what you're thinking about is like, you're building your question that you want stat head to answer. So I, I'm coming into this with a question in advance that I want it to answer. Um, and the way you do that is you start with the search criteria. And these uh, are a bunch of different, um, you know, basically search criteria that you can, you can use to narrow down exactly what it is you're looking for. So right now we're talking about war. So let's say I want to see uh, uh, five war players. We'll just, I'll just pick five war as, as the number I'm looking for. So I would scroll down here to the statistical filters. This is where the stats live. Uh, so this is home runs, RBIs, uh, OPS and OPS plus. And then we get down to war. We have advanced stats. We have win probability. So all that stuff lives here. So we're looking for war. We're going to do five war. And then if we wanted to get even more narrow, we could go into this, some of these other filters. So we have biographical filters, which are more like stuff about the players. So their age in the season uh, we're talking about, left or right handed, uh, even stuff like height and weight where they were born. Um, you can even, uh, I know a lot of people really like doing stuff with these, uh, you know, the first name starts with the letter A or the, the first name starts with the letter Z or, you know, the last name ends with a certain letter. Uh, you, can, you can do any kinds of stuff like that. Um, and then the status filter, I'm just gonna put a pin in that because I wanna call out something specifically from that later. Um, so for now, we're just gonna do five war and then uh, uh, so that, that's this, this left side, this, the, the search criteria. Then here in the middle, these are the query results. This is where it answers your question. So right now, the question I'm asking is how many players had five war or more in a season? And then I want that list sorted by the most home runs. So why not? Let's just fire away. Um, so this is everybody who had at least five more in a season. And it's in order uh, from most home runs to least. Um, you can see there's there's a lot of players who did it. Um, so that's the these query results. That's probably the most self-explanatory part. Although I do want to point out that you can resort any of these tables uh, by any of these columns just by clicking on the top. Um, but then the third part that I want to mention is this top thing here. Uh, these are the search types. And what these allow you to do is change the nature of the question you're asking. So right now, we're, at, we're asking about single seasons with five war. Uh, in theory, we could increase, we could ask combined seasons or careers with five war, which would be a ton of players. We probably want to add a zero, go who had 50 war in their career or who had 25 war in the 2000s, um, stuff like that. So we would do that there. Um, then this one is, is cool. So those two are pretty, pretty obvious, but the other ones, get even deeper. So um, this next option, find players with most seasons matching criteria. Now we're back again, searching it for single seasons, but instead of uh, just pulling up this list of every time someone did it, what it's gonna do is show us who had the most five war seasons. So who did this the most times in their career? And if you guessed Ty Cobb, you're correct. He did that 18 times in his career. Then we've got Bonds and Henry Aaron and so on. So this is who did who did that the most times. And we're using war as the example here, but we could do 50 home runs, 100 RBIs, stolen bases, any, any of those stats that we were talking about earlier. Then on top of that, we have this whole second row of search types that relate less to players. And instead they're looking for years and teams. So this one, find players in a season matching criteria. This would show us the year that had the most players who had five war. Um, so uh, we can see 1998 in the NL, there were 23. 2009 in the AL, there were 20 and so on. Uh, we can go to find most players on a team uh, matching criteria. So what team had the most uh, five war players in a single season? Uh, it was the 1976 Yankees and the 72 A's and the 39 Yankees uh, who all had five. Uh, and then the last one is players for a team in combined season. So if you wanna see who had, what franchise had the most players who had five war uh, while they were with the team. So uh, over their entire span of time with the team, you can see 153 people have had at least five, 153 hitters have had at least five war with the Cardinals. Um, 
So when you start mixing and matching the filters with the search types, you can really start doing interesting stuff. Um, so uh, uh, that's really where that's really where this starts to take off, in my opinion. Um, so one other thing I mentioned that I kind of uh, uh, glanced over earlier is this status filters. Um, this shows stuff like rookie status, active status, uh, like whether they're active or not, uh, Hall of Famer. And then uh, we just added uh, a new upgrade to this feature just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we upgraded the season finder um, and added, added a bunch of really cool stuff behind the scenes. But we also added two, two really cool, like new public facing things that uh, people have been asking for a lot. So one of them is with this one, all-star selection. Um, now in the past, that would only search for people who made an all-star appearance at some point in their career. Now what this does is search for all-star selections during the year. So now we can answer questions like who had the most war uh, uh, in a year where they did not make the all-star team. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll run that really quickly. I guess it's uh, gonna be, who had who, what five war players uh, didn't didn't do it, and yeah, it's just gonna sort it alphabetically. But we can sort here by war, and uh, I forgot to turn the year filter on, so you're getting a lot of a lot of guys before uh, the All Star game. But here, Willie Wilson in 1980 had 8.6 war, did not make the All Star team. Um, so that is that. The other new thing we added is postseason sets. So in the past, um, if you wanted to do postseason kind of history searches, you had to do this really complicated thing in the game finder. Now you can just go in here, you can click postseason, you can sort by, I don't know, RBIs, and you can get a uh, uh, single season RBI leaders in the postseason. Uh, you can combine it with all of these other filters I'm showing you, but you can just switch from the regular season to postseason stats in here. It's a very cool new feature that we've, that we just added with this new update um, that we've had requests for for a long time. So we're really glad to finally be able to deliver that for our users. Um, so that is uh, the season finder. But before I leave here, there was one other question I got that I thought was interesting and kind of relates to this uh, from Patrick, who asked, what options are there for searching for defensive statistics? Um, you don't uh, tend to see as much uh, uh, sort of defense as you know people looking for strikeouts and home runs, but there are defensive stats here in the season finder. Uh, so if I go down to the statistical filters um, and I scroll down to value, this is the war section. In addition to war, uh, just war straight up, it has all of the component parts of war. Uh, if you know how war works, it uh, calculates basically how much value you produced uh, in the field, at the plate, on the base paths, all converted into runs, then it adds, you know, uh, uh, some adjustments for replacement level for the position you play all of that. And that's how you get war. Um, what this does, so what, by having these component stats, you can search for just one section of war, including the fielding section. So with this fielding runs thing, we can search for players who were worth, at, who had at least 10 fielding runs. Um, and we'll, we'll stick with in order of RBI, why not? And, uh, do it that way. So we can find all sorts of really interesting uh, defensive stats. And you'll see here that this obviously uh, goes back. Uh, uh, War has a defensive calculation all the way, all the way back to the beginning of, uh, of, of baseball, pretty much. So um, uh, uh, it, it, it's obviously different stats that we're using for Babe Ruth versus how we calculate uh, Angelton Simmons today or um, uh, Nolan Arenado or someone like that. Um, but uh, uh, it's the same idea and you can um, go in here and, and sort by fielding all of that. So that's just one other thing I want to point out since uh, Patrick asked that question about defensive statistics. Um, one really fun thing to do is like combinations of different components of war. So you can do like, you know, batting runs, fielding runs and base running runs and see like who is the best all around player versus like, you know, someone who maybe cleaned up in one section and that's why their war is really high. So um, that's a fun kind of search to do. That's, that's fun and interesting stuff. And so in addition to the players uh, part of the season finder, we have a team part. And uh, we got a uh, question from Daniel who wanted to know kind of uh, what are some indicators that a team will exceed or maybe not exceed, uh, maybe like fall short of their expectations. Um, 
And so if you're doing that kind of like team level research, uh, what teams are, are gonna fall back to earth, what teams are overachieving, you can do that here in the, in the season finder. So one thing I'm gonna look up now is, uh, uh, I'm going to go to the pitching one because I, I was looking around on the leaderboards and I noticed the Dodgers pitching is out of control. They have a 180 ERA plus uh, this year, which is uh, insanely good. That means that their their pitching is 80% better than average. As a team, they're 80% better than the average major league team. Um, that's nuts. Uh, so I want to see kind of where that stacks up all the time. So I go to the season finder, the team season finder. Uh, and I'll just start by running this uh, uh, adjusted ERA plus search, just see the best ones of all time. And there we go. Uh, the Dodgers are third uh, on this list behind the Monarchs and uh, uh, a team in Boston. I'm uh, uh, not sure if that's going to be the Red Sox, maybe the Be Beanie Eaters. Um, I, uh, my 1872 baseball knowledge is uh, not what it should be as host of this webinar. I apologize for that. Um, but, uh, you can see the Dodgers right there in third, um, they have a 180 ERA plus. So, uh, looking at this thing, looking at this leaderboard and seeing that it's, it's mainly, um, um, older teams, teams that, uh, 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 you know, um, and stuff like that, that I'm not, I, I probably would bet on them maybe coming a little bit back down to earth, that they're not going to be 80% better than the average major league team throughout uh, the entire year, just kind of kind of scanning this. But it is interesting to see that this would put them in a uh, 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 very, very rarefied error, e even if they can get up to a thousand innings that uh, very few, very few teams have, have managed to do this. Um, so what if I want to see what the best, uh, uh, what, what maybe the mark to beat is for a 162 game season. So I know that like, this is probably just the Dodgers are on a bit of a heater, but where where would they need to finish to, to have the, the 162 game record? Because um, um, uh, that's how many games we're, we're playing this year, thankfully. So um, we would go to, um, uh, so, so we would want to uh, go, go up here maybe, sort by games and there we go, we can see, uh, uh, some 163, some 162. So I'll, I'll, I'll go here to the statistical filter, go to games played, hit 162, click get results. And there we go. So 138 uh, is the best ERA plus. It happened recently. The 2017 Cleveland Indians uh, posted the best ERA plus in a 162 game season. Uh, last year's Dodgers were right there with 137. So maybe it's not uh, that surprising maybe we shouldn't expect that much progression maybe they will make a run at this record uh from cleveland so um uh that is the team season finder and one other thing i want to point out about this that's really cool is down here we have this set stats to display and there are all sorts of different kinds of stats that you can get in here so value is war stats you can get um i'll show like pitches because that's really cool because it's all like pitch count based so you can see like three oh counts uh, looking strikeouts or looking strikes, swinging strikes, uh, all kinds of cool stuff like that. Um, so that is the season finder. And that is kind of the base tool. I would say that's probably the most popular tool. Someone asked, I think there's a question. I'm not sure if we'll get to it, but like, what's the most popular stat head tool? That is by far, uh, I think the most popular one, um, the season finder, but those are season stats, but a lot of the time we're watching a game and want to know if something in the game was unusual. Uh, and we got a lot of questions along those lines. So in order to do that, we're going to go to right next to the season finder, the game finder. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll work through this one a little bit quicker because I want to get to some of the more advanced ones. Um, but uh, in the game finder, uh, you can use this to find single game stats uh, as well as as you'll see, uh, there's a lot of different search options. Um, and uh, just between you and me, uh, it's just us, we're among friends on this call. Uh, that update that the season finder got, um, improving, adding new stuff, game finder is next on the list. So uh, stay tuned for more news on that in a, in a few weeks. We're working on some very exciting updates to the game finder and that's gonna be the next one to uh, 
to get a big update like what we did with the season finder that I mentioned earlier. So um, again, you see that same setup results here, search criteria here, seven different search types. In addition to just like what you see right now, which is just uh, single games uh, in order of the most strikeouts, you can get players who had the most games in a season matching criteria, the most games over a span of years matching their criteria. Um, you can get team games, season games, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, so um, one question we got was how do you uh, obtain relief pitchers hold data? Uh, one good way to do that is here in the pitching game finder. If you scroll down to the uh, filters, uh, in addition to the statistical filters, which are kind of what you would expect, there's a bunch of player filters and we have some pitcher specific ones, including the pitcher's role and the pitcher's decision. So you can see whether someone was a starter or a reliever. And then within that, you can see if it was a complete game, a shutout, if, they, if the reliever finished the game. Uh, and then under pitching decision, you can see uh, win, loss, decision, no decision, save, hold, all of that stuff. And not only that, but once you select that, you can add filters on top of it. So if we, so I can start with holds, but I can be like, oh, I wonder who had the most two inning holds uh, last year. Um, so I did two inning, I set it to hold, um, set the year to 2021, and I'm gonna do this find players with the most games in a season uh, matching, matching the criteria. Garrett Whitlock, uh, comes up there at number one, he had five, two inning holds. Um, so you can look for stats within holds. You can look for, you know, uh, Mets fans have probably tortured themselves with the DeGrom no win or DeGrom no decision uh, 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 game finder searches over the years. Um, it looks like this year, uh, maybe y'all won't have to worry uh, about that because the team looks amazing. Uh, and uh, seems like they're, uh, they're uh, definitely... Um, kicking butt so far. So uh, that's just one thing you can do in the batting version of this. Uh, there are similar filters for batting order position for uh, uh, position in that defensive position that they play in the field, all kinds of stuff like that. So um, that's where you can do that. Uh, someone was asking about no hitters. Uh, Scott wanted to know, you know, is it possible to get uh, like uh, no hitters or other things where there are zero um, results? Um, it's very easy to do here in the game finder. You just go down to uh, that uh, pitching role uh, that I was talking about earlier um, and we'll do complete game uh, and then hit, we'll set it to zero. Uh, we can also, if we want nine inning no hit hitters, uh, then we have a, a, a couple ways to do that. We can go down to game length here uh, and set it to um, equal to nine innings um, or greater than nine innings. Um, or we can go up here to innings pitched, um, get someone who who threw at least nine innings, um, and then I'll just do I'll just I'll just pull up the list. Um, but we can do you know which team had the most, which player, et cetera. Oh, so this is just twenty twenty one. Um, but uh, I could I could go for the back. But that's how you get no hitters. And then someone wanted to know how you could get combined team stats, and you can do that in the team game finder. So. Uh, what was the question? So, uh, it, John, it was John's question. Uh, can you say I had to find combined totals for both teams in a game? And one of his examples was most combined homers. So what I'm going to do is go to team batting. Uh, and then I'm going to go over here to find single game with both teams matching criteria. Um, and I'm going to plug in home run. Um, and then this is this is going to take some time because what we're going to do is pull up a list of every game where both teams hit a home run. Uh, but what you'll notice when this uh, finishes searching is that it gives you a combined stat line for both teams for the game. Uh, so here you can see the combined stats. So then you can click on this thing and restore it by home runs. Uh, now, unfortunately, in a case like this, we're going to have to go go way far back because it, uh, you'll notice when you resort it, it's only resorting among the games on this page, which uh, it's only displaying 300. So you'll have to click a couple of rounds back, um, depending on the search, you can obviously increase it. It's, it's unlikely that if both, you, you don't want games where both teams hit one home run. If you're looking up this, you could look for maybe 
uh, the single game record in home runs, kind of like get somewhere in that ballpark and then rerun the search or something like that. Um, but basically the, the key is that you, you put, you put in the filter you're looking for, for the stat in this search, you do single games with both teams matching criteria, and then you'll get that combined stat line. And from there you can resort it or uh, 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 I'll go into this later, but you can export it and, and work on it on your own. So that's how you, how you do that in the team game finder. So that is the game finder. Um, and we are going to keep going. Uh, the next question I, I mentioned earlier, I got a question from PJ, which is what is the most popular tool in StatHead and what is the most underutilized tool? So the two I just showed you, the season and the game finder, most popular tool, I think, uh, most popular tools, I think, uh, pretty, pretty handily. Uh, what is the, the most underutilized tool? In my opinion, it's the event finder. Um, the event finder is definitely the one that like, when you first look at it, you're like, what is this? Um, but as you get to use it, you'll find it's really easy and incredibly powerful because what it does is search play-by-play -play data. So let me go ahead and open up the event finder so you can see what I mean. Um, this is uh, the event finder. This is the batting event finder. And it's searching every single play in our database. Uh, we have every single play since 1973 in Major League Baseball, every single play. We have nearly every single play all the way back to 1950. And then it starts to get a little less complete, but we do have play-by-play -play data uh, for, for, for many games all the way back to 1915. So you are searching over 100 years worth of baseball plays from every game, 162 games in the season, all the way back to 1915. So there's a lot of data in here. Um, and so running searches in here, if you have a, a really broad criteria, it can take a while. If I, if I just kind of ran this search the way it's set up right now, we'd be searching every home run from 1915 to 2020. That's a lot of homers. That's a lot of dingers. Um, but uh, we would want to narrow it down. So how do you do that? Um, that's where this comes in. Instead of sort of the way the other tools work where there are these filters on the side, the event finder has this big menu here. And you can go through this menu and basically choose the filters you want. So right now, this is just showing us every home run uh, this season. But what if I wanted to see, I don't know, uh, I'll just turn on a couple of filters here and figure out what I want. So let's do, uh, we, can, we can do like uh, uh, first pitch home runs. Um, uh, so that would be the first pitch of the, uh, of the at bat, uh, swinging and getting a home run. We'll do a uh, uh, leadoff hitter, why not? And we'll say runner in, we'll say uh, any runner on, so any base runners. But as you can see, in all of those choices, there are different options. So if I wanted to do the eighth pitch of the at bat, if I wanted to do hitting ninth in the batting order, if I wanted to do bases loaded or running in, runners in scoring position, I can do all that. And not just that, but I can do the inning. <laughs> I could do the score at the time. Uh, I could do the count in the order if I wanted a full count, which obviously, since I have the first pitch, uh, is not going to be relevant. You can do where it went, who fielded it, uh, uh, the defensive position of the hitter. Um, and then up here, you can even see there's like individual hitters, individual pitchers, there's ballparks, there's opponents, uh, stuff like home and away and handedness, uh, any sort of option like that. So we've got our search. Um, and I'm just going to do 2022 because um, I, I don't want to mess with uh, uh, any of uh, we, we want to live in the now. This is this is about this year. So um, first pitch, any runners on, leadoff hitter, home runs. Let's run the search. And there we go. We have six matching things. So already we narrowed it down to just six times this year that that happened. Uh, and uh, then you'll see down here, you get the list. And once again, you can resort it by any of these column headers. So WPA, uh, win probability added. That's the one I usually sort by if I'm doing this um, because it's a good way to quickly see like we have this list of home runs, but which one was actually like the most important home run. Um, so this is really fun uh, to play with uh, and explore and experiment um, and stuff like that. Uh, you'll notice too in the game type filter that we have 
many options. So in addition to the regular season, you would go to all-star games. We have every play of every all-star game. We have every play in postseason history, uh, going back to 1903, uh, the first official World Series. Um, and one thing you'll notice across all of the stat head filters is when you toggle to postseason, you start to get these, these additional options. So you can sort by the series type. So if it's a World Series, an LCS, a wild card, et cetera, all of that's in there. You can also sort by the game number. So you want game one, game seven, uh, but of course the LDS is five games. So game seven searches won't get every single like game seven type game. So you can do this sudden death option, which includes the wild card game, which is winner takes all game five of the LDS, which is winner takes all and game seven of the LCS in the world series, as well as like game nine, when the world series went nine games, all of, all of that stuff, it accounts for all of that. There's last game of the series, potential clinching, potential elimination, all of those filters. So you can combine all of those however you want. So like, uh, I think a fun one would be like, uh, um, so let's, let's do sudden death games uh, and let's do walk off, walk off hit, walk off homers. So who had a walk off home run in any sort of like series clinching situation never happened. Uh, so that is something uh, for all of the players to strive for this season. Uh, but um, you could also see, well, what about someone leading off a game like that? The very first play of the game, did anyone do that? No, uh, not that either. So uh, as you can see, like when you're watching a game, especially postseason games where every at bat is so important, every play is so meaningful, you can hop into the event finder and be like, oh, wow, this, is, this has never happened before. Even if you're watching a, a game on a random Tuesday, there's a good chance, you know, Something will happen. You'll be like, that has never happened before. That's crazy. Oh, I see. The years got uh, messed up there. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, there we go. So it has happened. It happened four times. That's what I thought. Um, so, uh, so that that was user error on my 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 part for uh, scrolling uh, and playing too much with the filters. Uh, but my point still stands. You can be watching a game on a random Tuesday, see someone you know do something crazy, and uh, hop in the event finder and see. One other thing, I've been mainly doing home runs, but this has every play type in our database. So in addition to home runs, you could just do hits or singles. You could do walks, RBIs, um, hit by pitch. Uh, and then one thing I want to flag here is this non-strikeout outs. If you click on that, you'll notice an option, double and triple plays. So you can get lists so this is how you this is where you get lists of triple plays which is a, a very cool and rare thing uh you you do that here in the event finder non-strikeout outs only triple play and uh uh then you can just uh run the search so <coughs> i'll just run this quickly um and we can get you know a list of triple plays maybe you know you can narrow the ear you can look at a team uh, filter. You could do the postseason. There's, there's been one, I believe. Um, all that stuff in the event finder. So that is the event finder. I really can't emphasize enough what a great tool this is. Um, I uh, Before uh, my current role, I'm product marketing manager for Stathead. Probably if I were a good host, I'd have said that at the beginning of the, the webinar. Um, but in my my old, old life, I used to be our social media manager. So I would work during games and research stuff. So Good example of the event finder's utility is last year during the World Series, uh, Jorge Soler settled in for the very first at bat of the World Series, uh, knocked it out of the park. A home run in the first at bat of the World Series. I hopped in the event finder, looked it up, and it turned out that was the first time in World Series history that it ever happened, which is incredible because they've been playing the World Series for 118 years. So um, that's just one example of the, the kind of thing that you can do in here. Um, there we go. And now here's the list of triple plays as promised. Um, and just note that you'll see the batter and the pitcher. And then in the play description, you can see like kind of who, who threw it to who to get the outs. Um, so that is the event finder. Um, Stuart asked, uh, how do you stat head to gain a competitive advantage in fantasy? And that is a great question uh, because uh, I'm sure that there are a lot of you on the call uh, who are fantasy players. Uh, perhaps you like to uh, uh, gamble if you live in a state where that's legal. Uh, perhaps you play in some kind of prediction pool. 
Um, whatever the reason, uh, you can also use StatHead for that. Uh, I My main use is just like finding cool stats to like send to my friends in my uh, uh, Atlanta Braves group chat or, you know, in uh, uh, work Slack, um, just kind of doing that stuff. But I, you, you, I also definitely use it to gain an edge in fantasy. And one tool uh, that I really want to point out uh, to do that. So an obvious place to do that is player comparison finder. That's where I start pointing people to. Uh, this lets you uh, put player names in and see their stats side by side. So you can see right here, we have Harper and Trout. You could get up to six players. So um, if you're looking at a waiver wire ad um, and you're, you're torn between three different players, you can enter all three of them there and see their stats side by side. And not just kind of the box score stats, but kind of some of these deeper stats, like, uh, you know, these, these sabermetric ones, uh, like BABIP, you can see their ratio uh, stats and how they're attacking pitches. So like swinging strikes, looking strikes, all of that stuff. So you can look through all of these to try to find your edge on like, who am I going to pick up off, off of these three waiver wire players who all have the same stats? Or, you know, uh, do I want to do this trade? Is this trade worth it? Is is the player I'm give, giving up better than the player that I would be getting in the trade? You can plug all that into the comparison finder. But one thing th uh, that people maybe miss or don't notice is down here under the daily finder section, uh, there's something called today's starting pitchers versus opponents. And if you're looking at your lineup and you're trying to decide, you know, who should I play? Uh, like, which pitcher should I start? Who should I be playing at second base? You know, who's going to fill in that middle infield slot? You can go here and take a look at the starting pitchers and their historic performance against uh, the lineups, the players who are in the lineups that they're facing that day. So uh, Phillies Mets playing. Uh, we can see uh, Aaron Nola uh, has generally gotten crushed by Pete Alonzo. Uh, Alonzo has four home runs. He's a 1,200 OPS. If I have Nola, uh, maybe I'm thinking about sitting him for this matchup. If I have Alonzo, I'm probably starting him. I don't need to see this to, to know that I'm starting him, but it's good information nonetheless. Um, and you can see same same deal on the other side uh, of the of the of the of the field, basically. Um, uh, that Schwarber absolutely mashes every time he faces Taiwan Walker. Uh, but you'll notice too, uh, obviously you want to take it, take, take any sort of data like this with, you know, a grain of salt, but you'll notice that this, they've only faced 14 times. So it's less of a sample size than uh, Noah Alonzo, which has happened 37 times. If you want, you can sort by plate appearances to see maybe the, the ones with the most matchups. You can also see who's hit the most home runs. And on the flip side, you can see who's done the most strikeouts, who's had the most success. So Nola has had some success against uh, Alonzo. Uh, even though the OPS is high, he has struck him out 11 times. He struck out uh, Nimmo 13 times, McNeil 8. Um, so this is today's starting pitchers versus opponents. If you're a fantasy player, you want to do that. So it's so I, I'm going to show one last tool from uh, a question I got from Jay. And then I want to take some questions from the chat, if there are any. So uh, if you have any questions based on what I've been saying today, or if there's anything I haven't gotten to yet that you really want to see, uh, go ahead and drop it in that chat, drop it in the Q&A. And um, Katie's monitoring that, and she'll, she'll let me know. I'll take a look, too, when I'm done with this. But the last thing is a question I got from Jay that was just like, uh, can you show me the season, the span finder? And yes, Jay, I can, because I love the span finder. This is uh, something that um, when I started working here, once a week, we would get a request from someone saying, uh, I would love to be able to search any 20 game span or any three season span uh, uh, and player stats and that. And our, our programmers worked on it for years. And for years, it was just, you know, it's, it takes too long. There's no way we can do it. And finally, after years of work, they cracked it and they figured out how to actually make this kind of search work. It was very exciting. Um, and so now you can search uh, span uh, uh, spans of games. So in the game finder that I showed you earlier, you can look up single games. And you can also look at like a range of games if you designate the number. So like game 80 to game 99. Um, 
but that doesn't necessarily work for everything uh, you want to do because like oftentimes, like if a guy is red hot and he has a 1500 OPS uh, and you want to know, man, when was the last time someone had a 1500 OPS over a 30 game span? Um, any 30 game span, not, not just this one, not just the one he's having game 70 to game 99 or whatever, but any 30 game span, that's what the span finder is for. So one thing I was thinking about, I was kind of looking at players to show this off. And uh, the one I still on is Manny Machado because he is, uh, uh, he's on one right now. He has 2.3 war. Uh, he leads the NL in runs and hits. Uh, and he has a uh, over 1000 OPS. So I, I thought, all right, we're going to use the span finder to see uh, kind of where Manny stacks up. So uh, what we'll do is uh, see who's had uh, an OPS of at least 1030. That's uh, what he has. I'll, I'll, I'll drop down to 1025, which a little, looks a little better to me than 1030. I don't know why. Um, and then he has 35 hits. So I'll include that in here. Sure. Why not? And 23 runs. And he is entering tonight. Uh, he's played 25 games. So We'll do that 25 game span. And then um, we can do any, any 25 game span, or we can do a 25 game span at the start of the season um, in, in Manny's case. In other cases, like uh, I know Matt Olson was super hot, you know, Freddie Freeman's off to a great start. They're on new teams. If you want to see how, how a start like that compares, you could go to this option, start of stint with franchise. And it'll search just the span from when they changed teams, whether it was a trade, free agent signing, uh, you know, them just getting picked up, uh, you know, off the waiver wire or something, any sort of thing that started a new stint with a franchise. You can also do start and end of career. But in this case, we'll do start of season uh, since it's the first 25 games of the season for Manny. Um, note too that there are uh, options to like set, you know, like, what does the game mean? Is it the player had a plate appearance or did he come in as defensive replacement? Should that count? Um, you can also in the statistical filters use like a, a, a plate appearance minimum or something like that. Uh, I'm not gonna do that since we have uh, hits and runs scored. Um, you can also filter by things like team, defensive position, uh, age, you know, left or right handed, all of that stuff. And then you can do game, fun stuff with games. So you can do like a 30 game span against uh, the Mets or something, or a 30 game span against the Angels, or uh, a 30 game span in a ballpark. Um, all of that stuff uh, can be added on. Um, now, one thing about the span finder is that, uh, uh, like I mentioned, uh, if you think about what it's doing, it's going through our entire database and searching every single possible 25 game span that it can make. So um, by doing uh, start of the season, we've narrowed it down a little bit, but uh, if we were doing, e even then, that's a lot of spans because it's every single player, every single season, every 25 game span. And then if we go with any span, it's going through every single player, every single 25 game span possible. So it's one to 25, two to 26, three to 27, and so on all the way through for every season for every player. So as you can guess, that kind of thing adds up. So this kind of search does take some time, uh, to run. Uh, but when you finish it, the results that you get are really awesome. And um, it's just a really cool feature. I, I can't say enough positive things about it. I'm constantly blown away by what the, the engineering team can do here uh, and the kind of magic stuff they can whip up. But this was really something special. Um, so while that's loading, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start trying to maybe track down some questions. Um, Let's see. So I want to find career war in descending. Okay, so this is a good one. So Steve wants to know the career war in descending order uh, for all players who first played in 1970. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back to the season finder. That's where you'll find this information. Um, and I'm going to do this search, combine seasons or careers matching criteria. And then you're going to sort by war. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is take a uh, little look around here in the biographical filter because there's this option debut year. So what I can do, and I believe, uh, I'm, let me pull the question back up, uh, but um, 
let me see if I can find, find it. Here it is. Yeah. So it's who first played in 1970. So we want the, the guys who, who made their debut in 1970, not 1970 to today, not a range of years, just 1970. So what I'm going to do is under that debut year, I'm going to scroll down to 1970. And then if you click this red two button, um, oh, well, that didn't work. But normally uh, it would just fill in the second one. It would fill in this one with the same year as the first one. In this case, I had to go through the labor of finding 1970 again and adding it in there, clicking get result. And <coughs> when this is finished running, it's going to give me the leaderboard of hitters with the most war, uh, hitters who debuted in 1970 in order of most war to least. So Bobby Gritch is the winner here with 71.1. And then you could go run the same search in the pitching season finder if you uh, weren't just looking for hitter war, if you wanted to see overall player, hitter, and pitcher. So that is that. While I'm here, I want to touch on a question that I got uh, from Don uh, in the RSVP form, which was um, about how do you convert the data to a CSV or an Excel? You know, how can I get the data off of StatHead onto my blog, onto my website, or onto my computer where I can do more research? And the answer to that is this little thing under the query results that says export data. Every table in StatHead has this little dropdown that says export data. And this is how you get the, the data off the site. So you'll see there's, there's a few different options here. Um, you can do, uh, this one is modify export and share table. And I'm gonna click on that. And you'll see what happens now is I get this menu of options. And I also, the table now has these X's. And what I can do is use the X's to close out and eliminate any column or any row that I don't need. And then these, the other like kind of home plate looking X, if I click on that, it'll get rid of everything past that point. Uh, so you can see there, I clicked on it on runs, everything after runs is now gone from the table. Um, and I'll do the same thing with Joe Ferguson, everyone below him out of there. Um, so then once you have the table narrowed down to what you want, uh, you can export it. So uh, you can export it as an HTML code. Uh, you click that, this is HTML code. You just copy and paste it into your blog, your website, uh, whatever you're, you're using HTML for. Uh, if, you're, if you're on Reddit, we have it already formatted for, for Reddit. All you have to do is copy this and put it in the comment or the uh, initial post you're doing. And it'll show up as a table that's perfectly formatted and readable on Reddit. Uh, same thing with bulletin boards. We've got a JavaScript widget, uh, all kinds of cool stuff. So that is basically like if you're doing stuff on the internet with it. But if you want to do stuff on your computer with it, you'll go to these options below modify export and share table. So what you can either do is click get as Excel workbook. And it'll download an Excel file onto your computer with, uh, with that table. Or you can click get table as CSV and that'll convert it to a CSV, copy and paste it and uh, you're good to go. So um, I do this a lot. I do the work, the Excel workbook a lot. Um, if you're trying to calculate uh, additional stats or trying to do any sort of uh, advanced stuff on your own. And once you have that workbook, you can obviously put it, you can do Excel stuff with it, but you can put it into your programming, you know, thing of choice if you want to do more advanced research. Um, really, the sky's the limit. Uh, so that is how you get stats off the site and onto your computer. So let's see. Any way to find out what hitters have the most games this season with at least one hit? Yes, there is. Uh, so Wando asked, is there any way to find out what hitters have the most games this season with one at least one hit? Uh, so we're going to do that in the game finder. Uh, I paused there. I was thinking about asking you to being like, what do you think it is? But then I realized you can't respond to me. So that would have been uh, pointless. So uh, what I'm going to do is go to the player batting game finder. Um, and we're looking for players who had at least one hit. So I'm going to stats filters, hit one. I'm looking for this season. So 2022. And then I'm looking for who did this the most times. So I don't just want single games matching criteria, because that's just going to give me a list of every player, every single player game with one home run. I want to see who did this the most. So I'm going to go to find players with the most games in the season matching criteria. And then I'm going to run this search. 
And there we go. These are the players who have had the most games with at least one hit this year. Um, very simple search to do in the game finder. Just takes a, a couple seconds. Uh, and as far as Chris's question, uh, if you have multiple pages, uh, to get the, the table exported, you have to go page by page. So you can't do that. Uh, uh, each page only shows up to 300 rows of the table. So if you have more than 300 results, you'll have to go to the next page and export that, and then go to the next page and export that, and on and on, uh, depending on how many results you have. Um, so great question from Chris. We get that one a lot. Um, Okay, Jim had a good question. Is there any way to find a pitcher that tossed 10 strikeouts in a game at Fenway Park and also had two hits at the plate in that same game? Uh, I can't imagine if there's any players in Major League Baseball right now who that might be relevant to, who might, might, be, might be achieving things like that. I uh, can't imagine why that would be coming up. But uh, if you wanted to do that, the, the tricky thing about this is obviously um, that uh, – you can't have uh, is that the batting and pitching stats live in separate finders. So there is no one search that's going to give you a combined total uh, with uh, like just combining both of those things. So what you're going to want to do for this one is start here in the batting finder and look for pitchers who had a two hit game at Fenway. So the way you do that, we already have the hit thing handily ready to go. So I'll up that to two hits. And then we'll get into player filters, select defensive position, uh, and uh, go with pitcher. And then you can see down here, there are these options, played any one of the selected positions, played every selected position, played only those marked and none others. So um, we'll do, we'll start with just played any one of the selected positions. Uh, we might have to narrow it down a little bit if like someone pinch hit for a pitcher and came in and they were scored as the pitcher or certainly you know, if there's some position player pitching late in the game. Uh, and then obviously we want ballpark, which is under game. And we want Fenway, which is there. Um, so I've sorted it by date. So this is going to give us uh, the list of pitchers with two hit games in Fenway. So what we'll do once we get this search is export it to uh, Excel, get it on the computer. And then, um, and you'll see, you know, obviously this is pretty, pretty quickly, quick, uh, you know, sort of uh, goes to the, the pre-DH area. But once we, have, once we have this list, we'll export it to Excel and then go to the pitching game finder and run a similar search for pitchers who had 10 strikeouts. And then once we have that, we'll export that to Excel, combine them into one spreadsheet. And then you can, once you have them on the same spreadsheet, you can just look and see uh, uh, matching games, like which, which, which games or, or uh, which player games appear twice, that will mean that they appeared on both spreadsheets and they, they, they did both things. So that's how I would do it. Um, if, uh, I, I'm not sure if, if other people have, have a different way uh, that they would attack a question like that, but that, that's usually my, my way of trying to find these sorts of batting and pitching com combined accomplishments. Um, so a great question. Uh, thanks for that, Jim. Um, we are about at time. Um, so I think that, uh, I'm probably going to, let me just take a quick look at the chat and see if there was anything else. Um, yeah, yeah, it's nine o'clock. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and finish it up. Um, so that is Stathead. Uh, we've been here an hour, uh, and I've just barely scratched the surface. Um, I did not get into the split finder. You can use the split finder to find split stats, like, uh, uh, stats, by a player in a ballpark, uh, stats by batting order position. You can also use it, uh, why not? I'll just dive in. You can also use it to find combined MLB totals. So um, when you go to the team filter and uh, uh, under, uh, uh, or the league filter, yeah. So you can use this to um, uh, find combined MLB totals. You can go to season totals and find the combined totals in there. Um, you can uh, 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 narrow it down by split. So you can see player age, you can see defensive position, you can see how players did in the clutch. There's some really cool stuff. There's, uh, I, I don't know how much people like notice this, but like power versus finesse pitchers, you can see how hitters do versus different types of pitchers, ground ball versus fly ball pitchers. 
All that stuff is in the split finder. We have something called the pivotal play finder that shows the most important monumental plays of the season in terms of what swung uh, the, the odds of winning the championship. Um, we have streak finders that show hitting streaks, strikeout streaks, home run streaks, any streak you can imagine is in the streak finder. And we've got uh, all kinds of uh, really cool tools down in the other section. Um, the neutralizer is a very popular one. I, I think a lot of people probably uh, have at least seen that, but that's where you can take a player's stats and uh, neutralize them and alter them for a different run environment. So it's where you do like, what if Barry Bonds played his career in Coors Field? You know, how many more home runs would he have? Uh, stuff like that. So all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, <coughs> one thing, if you watch MLB TV and uh, you'd like a, an experience where it like shows you uh, where it bounces around games to show you the most relevant thing, the stream finder, uh, when, when you use it with MLB on desktop, MLB TV on desktop, it'll bounce from game to game as live games are happening to show you the most interesting action as decided by you. You set up your priorities list um, and then uh, uh, you can set it based on the game situation, who's hitting, who's pitching, uh, just kind of like random stuff like extra innings or a position player pitching. And then it, and then when you click launch video, it'll take you, it'll just turn on MLB TV and then you can watch in like red zone programmed by you it will switch games when something higher on the priority list comes up. So it'll jump around and let you see the most interesting action as it's happening. So you need an MLB TV subscription for that, but if you, if you have one, it's really a, a great thing to use in addition to really get the most out of that. So um, that is StatHead. Like I said, one hour just barely scratched the surface. But if you like what you saw, um, then uh, I would recommend uh, giving it a try. Uh, if you aren't currently a StatHead subscriber, you can get one month for free when you sign up uh, uh, for, for a monthly StatHead account. You can try it for a full month for free and uh, uh, see if you like it. We're also here to help. So if you have any questions uh, or if you're trying to figure something out on what to do on StatHead, if there's something we didn't get to that you're dying to know, email Katie at uh, support at StatHead.com. That's support at StatHead.com. And uh, we'll, we're, we're always really happy to help you out. We're also on, on Twitter at StatHead. Um, we're on uh, Facebook as well, StatHead. So um, reach out to us there. If you have any questions, we really want to make sure that you're getting the most out of StatHead. And like I mentioned, if you're a fan of more than just baseball, we have basketball, we have pro football, and we have hockey. So uh, tons of tools, tons of sports. You can answer basically any sports question you want with StatHead. So that is it. Thank you all so much for coming tonight. Um, I hope that whatever team you picked wins the World Series and makes you look very smart. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this and got a lot out of it. We're going to send the video around uh, probably tomorrow. So uh, if there's anything you missed or anything you want to see again, you'll be able to review all that. And like I said, if you have any questions that we didn't get to, email us and we'll be happy to respond. But thank you all again so much for spending an hour of your night with me and uh, have a really good evening and uh, enjoy baseball.